I, as you know, we are here at Bedford View High School. In obviously Bedford View. Put this light to the sub on a winjan. Yeah, Pila Winjani. Menang train number number track. What's your name? How old are you? Where are you from? I'm Kamahela Mutawung. I'm from Ekatlahong, Mavimbela, and I'm 17 years old. Now tell me, sister, you know, the reason I cut off my threads, eh? and I loved them, they were like up to here, they were long, seven years. Every time I passed people, they were like, Rasta. And I'm like, no, I'm not Rasta, I'm Maraza. What do dreadlocks represent to you? Um, dreadlocks, they represent the naturality in us, you know. Because we are true Africans, because we do not, we do not like damage our scalps with them chemicals, you know. Yeah, okay. just keep us real. Hey, you know how damage your scalp with them chemicals now? What's your question for our teacher in our studio? My question is, how do you draw a graph of a cubic function? Cubic functions, Amanda. How do we draw a graph of a cubic function? The tricks you've got to watch this. It is about 15 marks, girls, 15 marks in the matric final exam. Isn't that amazing? Out of 150. So let's get going with the cubic function. Okay. Sketch the graph of, now look at that, 2x cubed minus 6x minus 4. Okay. Who knows what an x squared graph is? It's a parabola. Do you remember that one? And a y equals x graph is a line. But what about x cubed? Now you've got to watch this. This is absolutely beautiful. Everything that you've learned about parabolas and lines applies. X intercepts, y intercepts, you let x be naught. X intercepts, what do you do, girls? Let y, y be naught. Now you see they know that. Um, and then we've got a new thing called turning points or stationary points, okay, where the derivative equals naught. Okay, now how do we do this? Let's start this. First things first, the y intercept is where x is naught. Okay, where does the graph cut the y-axis? Well, if we let all the x's go to naught, the y value is negative four. Remember, fx is y. Do you remember that from school? fx is y. y. Okay, here we go. Now, the next thing, now be very careful. The x-intercept, we're gonna let y be equal to naught. Now, the problem with this is it's a cubic equation. Okay, now have a look at that. First things first is I'm gonna divide everybody by two to make it easy. But remember, it's cubic. So how do we get the factors? Now, how did I get this? Well, we're gonna do it the Galeza Nazi way. You could use long division, you could use synthetic division, or the way that we do it. Now have a look here. I'm just gonna quickly revise this for you. Okay, what we do is we test numbers that go into two. And you clearly see that one and two are factors of two. Do you agree that a factor of two would be one and two? Do you agree? Plus, minus uh, numbers as well. And then we test them, okay. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna test, let's say we choose x is equal to no, no, uh, minus one. Now the girls in the studio are looking for a potential husband. Do you agree, Amanda? And they're gonna <laughs> test these guys, okay. There's four of them that they're gonna choose and they're gonna take them out for dinner, um, the parents are going to interview them online. Should we give them everything. names? We're going to give them names. Yes, let's so we name can, them Derek. Yeah, Derek and, and who, well, who and else? And Sipo. Sipo and whoever. <laughs> okay, now here we've got, we've got Sipo. Okay, now we're going to test. Now remember, we, we check to see if he is going to meet all the requirements. So what do we We plug him into the equation. Okay, so we plug him in there into this equation and we test him. Negative one cubed is negative one. Negative three times negative one is positive three, subtract two. And look at, look at this, three minus two is one minus one is not. He's Mr. Cool. He's my zero. <laughs> Mariah Carey saying about that. <laughs> There's a zero. <laughs> when you look inside your notes, you don't have to be afraid of cubic functions. Because there's a zero. Because there's a zero. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, am I in love? Am I in love? Look at this, girls. You're in love because there's your zero. And if he becomes a zero, he becomes a factor in your life. So we take him across and there's a factor. Can you see that there? A factor x plus one. And then what did we then do to get this here? We then did our little smiley face. So we said there, okay, we've got x plus one 
and then we said, okay, we've got x squared first plus mx, and then we've got negative two there. Okay, remember, um, x times x squared gives you the x cubed, and then we've got one times negative two gave you negative two. And don't forget, now remember, you're missing a term. You're missing the x squared term. So what did we do? We went and we wrote it in. So that's the important thing, naught x squared. Now, how do we get the x squared terms? By connecting those two, one x squared, and by connecting those two, plus mx squared, is naught x squared. We had a whole big lesson on this in Moby School. We explore this in a lot of detail. So then what did we have? We had, if you have x squared plus mx squared is naught x squared, then you've got, you simply divide everybody by the x squared and you've got one plus m is equal to naught and m is minus one. And there's your minus one there. Okay, now remember I rushed through this very quickly, but you can then factorize that x squared minus x minus two and you get yourself your x-intercept. Okay, do you see how that lesson that we did on the factor theorem comes in? And you can get this on Moby School, but it's going to be very much intellect into calculus. Okay, now what's the next thing, okay, that we can do? We can go on and we can get the stationary points or the turning points. We get the derivative. Okay, now how did we do that matrix? Remember, you bring down the 3 and you multiply it with the 2, giving you 6x to the three minus one, you subtract one. That's rule one from last time. And what's the derivative of negative six x? It's negative six. And the derivative of a constant, what is that? Someone said it? It's the Western Cape. I heard, I heard the Western Cape. I heard it Cape. as well. Did I, you girls hear that? I heard it, I heard it. No, it's Sibungeli from the Western from Cape. Western okay, Cape. yes, and she says zero. Okay, and then what happens? At a turning point or station, we point your derivative is zero. Remember, the important thing is when you get it at a turning point, your gradient is zero. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. So we put the gradient equal to naught, and then we simply divide everybody by six, and you can then say x is plus minus one. How did I do that? Well, I brought the negative one across, x squared is 1, so x is plus minus 1. You happy? So we've got our two x values of our turning points. Okay, very important but trick work. Now for negative 1, we go to the original and we plug him in. Okay, so f of negative 1 is 2 times negative 1 cubed minus 6 times negative 1 minus 4. And look at this, that's negative 1 cubed, negative 1 times 2, negative 2 plus 6 minus 4. And again, you get naught there. So that is, and then you put in one, so let's do the same there. And what is that? Two minus six minus four is gonna give you negative eight. Now look at this, you've got two stationary points there. Negative one, zero, one, negative eight. So x-intercept, you let y be naught, and you do the factor theorem thing that we did with a smiley face, everything that we did in the Galeza Nazi tradition. And then what we did is for stationary points, derivative equals naught, Okay, you put the derivative equals naught, solve for x, plug back into the original, and out come your turning points. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we get a point of inflection, if you remember that. Now, what is a point of inflection? It's simply where a graph changes from being sad to, being happy. to happy. When you're sad and you become happy, the moment you change your attitude, we have a point of inflection. Okay. I'm sad, look at this, watch here, this is I'm sad, I love this Amanda, I'm sad, and suddenly I become happy. Can you see that there? And at that point, we call that a point of inflection. This is called a stationary point or a turning point. And if you look at this, we can go, these are what we call turning points. Can you see that there? Stationary points, the gradients are zero. But at points of inflection, something happens from here sad to happy or happy to sad okay all right now here we go now watch this this is so romantic now people this is going to be very i'm going to show you the galeza nazi way but let me do what the textbooks do they get the second derivative and put it equal to naught the second derivative okay now that gets confusing so we've got the first derivative the second derivative well we do it again so six times two is, is going to be 12x minus naught, and we put it equal to naught, and we get x is naught. So then the point of inflection is x is naught at negative four. Another way is so much easier. All you do is you add up the x's of the, of the turning points, divide by two. Okay, very easy. Now all you do is you draw the curve. Negative one naught, there's the x-intercepts. 
there's the y-intercepts and there's your turning points and the point of inflection happens to be there, sad to happy. And there you've got the graph of the cubic function. Church of the jungle, watch out for that student. How are you doing, Mr. President? I'm fine, thank you, sir. I'm very well. We are graced by His Excellency, the RCL President of Bedford View High School. Please address your people. What's your name? How old are you? Where are you from? Good day, everyone. My name is Homele Mangwana. I'm from Riverley, Johannesburg. All right, Riverley, Johannesburg. Speaking of Riverley, we're sitting here by the bushes, and there's like a prince. Prince Charming there in the back who's still in frog form. Uh, what are your fa some of your favorite fairy tales as a kid? I never used to like any fairy tales. Because life is a harsh reality. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, the reality of this show is that we can't kiss any frogs into princes, but we can kiss your questions goodnight and just bring you back answers. So what's your question for our teacher in the studio? My question is, may you please explain the concept of an increasing and decreasing function as well as the point of reflection? Increasing and decreasing functions, this is pretty cool. When a graph goes up, as you read from left to right, as it goes up, it's increasing. When it gets to its turning point, it's zero. And when it decreases, it's a negative, it feels negative. Think of it, if you're at Gold Reef City going up that anaconda thing, you know that thing, you go up, it goes very positive, the gradient's positive, you feeling good, then you get to this place, and what is it? Yeah. Zero feelings, and then it goes wah down like that. Oh my word, that's terrible! You know that feeling? It's negative. Now that's how graphs work. Maths is easy. Have a look here. So if you look at this, look at the graph here. Can you see what's happening here? The 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 tangent line is sloping to the right. To the right. If you move from left to right, you notice that you're going up. So the graph is increasing, okay. Now have a look at that. We can also go like this, watch this. If you go to the turning point, the gradient is zero. Here the gradient is positive, the m. You remember y equals mx plus c? That's the gradient of the curve. It's increasing, it's going up. And then it gets zero, then it decreases. The tangent line is sloping to the left. The gradient is negative. You're going up here. Here's Amanda here. Let's draw Amanda quickly. My art's not very good. But there she is. She's going up here. Then she gets there, she's feeling positive. Then she goes down and suddenly, ah, hey, down. Okay, that's terrible, hey. Yeah. That's what we call decreasing. Okay, now look at the cubic graph. Where's, where do you think it's increasing from? Now we, we need to get some x values here. Okay, if you look at this, this is x is one and that's x is three. Now, do you agree in this little region here, if, if I spoke to you about this region here, what is happening? Do you agree that the graph, as you as you walk from left to right, your little insect, a ho ho there, walking up the graph. Here he goes, he's increasing, he's going up there. So for all the values of x, to the left of one, all those guys. If you go x less than one, the graph is increasing. Do you see that there? Now what happens, the hoho gets here and he goes all the way down. He's decreasing, decreasing. to three. So from one to three, um, the graph is to here, it's increasing. Here it's, it's decreasing. decreasing. And then the hoho does what? It increases He's going again. up there, he's increasing here. And that goes from all the values bigger than three. And remember, it's so important to remember that if you look at the gradient of the tangent, the tangent is sloping to the right, it's positive. What's happening at the turning point? What's the gradient doing there? It's being... Mariah Carey? It's being zero. Zero, okay. And then it comes down. Whoa, and it goes... Oh, what do you call this point? What do you call that point? Come on. From sad to happy, what do we call that? Turning. It's point turning. of... In flexion. flexion. Okay, so remember that in an exam they're going to ask you for which values of the x is a graph increasing or decreasing.